Hey, how's it going? Jacob Bartley here for Apocalyx Movies, and this is my review for the Woody Allen film, Cafe Society. Please enjoy. Hello, so I'm here to review the new Woody Allen movie, Cafe Society. Now, I'm sure most people out there have not heard this film, and I'm sure it's not available in all areas. Luckily, I live in Sacramento, California, and we don't get all the indie films that come out, but luckily the theater down the street from my work is, was playing this movie, and you might be asking, what makes you interested in this film? Well, I, I haven't seen all of Woody Allen's films. I haven't even seen his classics, but there's a film in particular of his that I really appreciate, and it's in like my top 25 films of all time, and that is Match Point. It stars uh, Scarlett Johansson. I forget the lead of the main guy, but... Um, it's a movie that made me fall in love with Scarlett Johansson, and it, it's a movie that uh, kind of highlighted like social classes and infidelity in the film and made me really appreciate Woody Allen as a director and the type of themes that he likes to cover. When I heard about Cafe Society, uh, I, I like to know as little as possible going into a movie because I want to be surprised about the movie. So I had no idea what Cafe Society was about. I just knew it was directed by Woody Allen star Jesse Eisenberg and Kristen Stewart and that was enough to get me in the theaters because like I said Match Point one of my favorite movies of all time Jesse Eisenberg is becoming one of my favorite actors working today I really do appreciate Kristen Stewart when she's when she's actually putting in some effort and also I didn't find this out till I got into the movie but Steve Carell is one of the leads in this film which is pretty cool if I would have known that I would have been more intrigued with watching the movie um, but overall like you you gotta know what you're in for with the Woody Allen film, especially lately, because while he's, he has his classics, he hasn't been on his game as as much lately. Like, he, he gets great performances. He got Kate Blanchett an Oscar win with Blue Jasmine, but a lot of people don't appreciate his movies as much as they have, and they, they haven't been that good as far as the general consensus has been. But for me, I actually really liked Cafe Society. Now, I, what it's about is I can't really even tell you what it's about. It doesn't really have a definitive plot, but it's kind of it. It kind of again like Match Point touches on different social classes and different as levels of life, like how some people are big shots and they're in they're in a you know a place of power and they can do more things with their life and attract more people to their life. And there's other people that are at the bottom of the food chain who are working hard and trying to build themselves up and make a life for themselves. And how those type of different people are viewed and how and in that time how women perceived men and they defined them by their success and it kind of deals with that kind of stuff and it deals with it deals with a lot of love stories and infidelity as well um, just overall I, I really appreciate those things about it and I got to start with uh, as far as positives go I got to start with Jesse Eisenberg I this guy is becoming something really special in my opinion like I he's he's really improved as an actor um, I mean we saw him do something really good in the social network he was nominated for an Oscar and I don't care what you think I think he as far as his performance goes you can say what you want about the character but in Batman v Superman he gave it his all playing Lex Luthor and I personally think he did a fantastic job so for those few reasons, I was really looking forward to watching this movie, and he really delivers. He carried the film. He's actually really charming because he kind of has. To, he's not a ladies' man. He's still the awkward, kind of quiet guy. But there's certain moments in this movie where he, when he gets comfortable with a woman, like he's very charming in this movie, and I thought he was really good. Also, Kristen Stewart was pretty dang good in this movie as well. She, as you know, she has not been the greatest actress, but she's come a long way. She's improved a lot lately, from what I've heard from other people from other films. And I think she was really good in this movie. She had, she played the role well, and she was really solid, in my opinion. Steve Carell was pretty good. Like He wasn't a highlight of the film, but I just appreciated having him in there. I didn't even know he was in the movie. He's one of the main leads, which is which was really cool to see. Um, also, you got Blake Lively in there. She, was, she had a very small role, so I can't really comment on her performance. But overall, the performances were really strong and I just realized I didn't even know that until I was looking up for a, a background image for the movie but Corey Stoll's in the movie I didn't even know that he plays Jesse Eisenberg's older brother and the fact that I didn't even know it was him goes to show that he played a great he did a great job at playing that character so 
he was really good as well. Um, the one thing that gets me with these Woody Allen films, just like Max Point, is the dialogue. The dialogue and the interactions between the characters. Like, there's no pause. Like, the, these characters are talking back and forth, talking back and forth, talking back and forth, and like, you get just lost in the dialogue and what they're talking about. And they're talking about simple things, but then at the same time, there's this overarching theme in whatever they're talking about. Like, whatever they say has a deeper meaning, and then you got you have to think about it to kind of understand what that deeper meaning is. So. The dialogue is a strong point for me, and those are just a few. And the the way they portrayed the time era, like I'm a sucker for period pieces. So the way they portrayed the time era and just the flashy lifestyle of the rich and famous, I'm always intrigued with seeing that in films. So the way he captured that was really good. Um, and there, the movie was not great per se. So there were definitely some negatives. Um, just maybe the there wasn't a definitive plot, like I said earlier, like. There's story elements that you're following from the beginning till the end, but there's not necessarily a beginning, middle, end to the story. It's kind of just like watching, like watching the lives of these people, like over a few years. Like, it's like if you were watching somebody's life in real life without it being a movie. That's kind of how it felt. And I feel like there should have been a more, the movie should have been a little bit, a little bit tighter and have a, an exact plot and, and a beginning, middle, end, and end point. For where it was going and that brings me to the end the movie just kind of ends and like there's no resolution or anything and i get what he was trying to do with the movie there's a meaning behind it there the movie was trying to say something and it was trying to say pretty much i mean i don't want to spoil the movie it won't spoil it for you but it's pretty much saying that like life goes on and stuff happens and you can't do anything about it you just got to keep moving on and that's maybe a cliche thing but I can't really explain it exactly what it is without spoiling it, so just keep that in mind. The movie just kind of ends out of nowhere, but at the same time, it wasn't a horrible ending. It just I wish it would have had like a resolution at the end, which it really did not have. And also, while I said most, I liked a lot of characters. Some of the characters were just cliche, like created for that time era, and and I feel like over time, movies have portrayed. Like mob characters and characters from New York, like a certain way. So the way the movies portray them are how we think they were in real life. And I think those type of characters have just became cliches, not real people, not real characters. So there's a few of those characters in there, and yeah, it just it, I don't know. It, it it's weird. Like it didn't feel like a movie, like I said. But I personally really did enjoy it for the reasons, like I said, the Woody Allen themes that are in a lot of his movies. The dialogue and the performances were enough for me to enjoy this movie, and I would actually recommend seeing it if you're a fan of those things, or if you're a fan of indie dramas, or if you're a fan of like old school Hollywood lifestyle, or like watching uh, gr the glamorous lifestyles of the rich and famous and stuff. Don't go in expecting a lot. Just uh, if you're a fan of that kind of stuff, I think you would really enjoy it. And as far as giving Cafe Society a score, I th I'm going to give it a seven out of ten it wasn't a great movie it wasn't really good it was good i think it's a good movie it's just it just didn't do it all the way for me but for me personally for my personal taste and interest i actually really enjoyed it so there you go my review of woody allen's cafe society thank you all for listening and uh let me know what you thought of cafe society hit me up in the comment section uh hit that like button subscribe if you like movies and you want to hear our thoughts on most of the movies that come out and check out our Apocalypse Movie News Podcast. It's weekly. Every Friday or Saturday we re release our movie news podcast talking about the biggest stories throughout the week. Uh, check out Apocalypse on Instagram and you can find me on Twitter at Jacob Barley underscore. Again, thank you all for listening. Until next time, take care.